trainer like official within government. Okay, so um, he, he was a really interesting writer. He wasn't published necessarily in his lifetime. A couple things were published, but not, not a ton. And he, um, went, he gave his friend Max Brode all of his manuscripts when he died, and he said, or when he was dying. And he said, um, when I die, destroy all these manuscripts, right? Destroy all my work, because it's not worth, worthy of being. And so when Kafka died, Max Brode went and published everything. You know, so, <laughs> good friend, right? Um, so, but anyway, that just gives you a little background on him. Well, let's just read it how we read a book, we read a story, or how we write an essay, right? For me, writing essays and stories are exactly the same process. They're no different. They have the same aspects of them. So I prefer to look at it as, I prefer to look at it as a, a piece of literature, even essays. I always wrote my academic essays looking at it as a story writer, and that's what I kind of like. I, I want to do. So, but what makes a story? Characters. Characters. Plot. Plot. Keep going, brother. Um, the climax. Location. Climax. Okay. Cut. Wait. Setting. This thing. Oh my god. That sucked. Oh, that doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to throw it away because it's not working, but it still smells good. <laughs> you can <probably> try that. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try to work up. Look at this. Carrot. Caricatures. <laughs> yes. Don't, don't screw me up. Carrot. By the way, I did tell you, right? I told you what my degrees were in. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah. What did I not tell you how my degree was in? Spelling. Yeah? My degree is not in spelling. <laughs> okay? I don't even know if they have a degree in spelling. But um, I don't know much about spelling and I'm not good at it. But what I do know is that I know that when I go onto this computer thing, I know that there's a red line. And I know that there's a blue line. <laughs> and I know if there's a red line or a blue line, there might be a problem. That's how I go in and fix the problem, right? It's a beautiful thing. When I first started writing, I was writing on a typewriter. You know, it wasn't that long ago, by the way, either. It's weird. It was not that long ago. And so I was writing on a typewriter. A typewriter leaves no room for errors. Yeah, I mean, they do have whiteout and stuff like that, but man, it's like a whole different ball game. Like, maybe we should write with typewriters only. Anyway, so character, somebody said plot. Uh, setting? Setting, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, somebody said climax, and that's part of the plot. Climax is the most important part of a story, right? Mm -hmm. You know? It's like the point that you're making. And, um, and so, but there's a couple other things that I want you to decide when you're writing. Uh, what? Oh, <laughs> I was looking for a pen somewhere. Um, so, I, the other things I want you to think about is I want you to think about verbal tense, past, present, or future, right? Your your verbs when you're when you're talking about your verbs, which are you using? Are you using past, present, or future? And when you choose that, I don't care what you choose, but when you choose that, stick to it and have a reason for it. So, um, and then uh, point of view. Um, and point of view meaning first, second, or third person. First person point of view, when somebody is writing in the first person point of view, it's I. Yeah, you. Yeah. Right? And it doesn't even necessarily have to be you, but when you're writing, you're going, I think this, right? Um, um, or you're following like, a character's storyboard. Yeah. Right. The, and, and it's a really great way to write certain things. Because you get into their mind and you get into their perspective. Yeah, it's like reading somebody's journal. And they could be totally wrong, right? Yeah. Or interpreting things wrong. But yeah, you're in their head, you know? Uh, so that's the I. The second person point of view is the you. And, uh, this is, it's really difficult. Most people don't write this way. The only thing that I'd say is 
it means the writer is writing directly towards you, telling you what to do. So think about it as an instruction manual or as a cookbook or something like that. Like they're telling you what to do. Um, and third person point of view is removed from the story, not in the story. Narration. Narrative stories, right? Um, so they're just like kind of going, what's happening? Okay, cool. Basics of story, basics of essay writing, by the way. Every essay has a plot, okay? It kind of has characters. It does have setting. The setting is what you're writing about. Um, but uh, think about it that way. So, okay, so who are the characters in this story? Gatekeeper. And? Uh, the man who wants to get in. The, man. the guy that wants to get in. Yeah. The man, man from the country. Could you count the other gatekeepers that he mentioned? Maybe, yeah. And the fleas. Okay. And the fleas. Fleas, they're in it. Fleas. Other gatekeepers. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, we agree that this is the antagonist? No? Antag oh, yeah, antagonist. Anta the one who brings conflict, yeah. right? Okay. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. So that makes him the protagonist. Well, if you call the gatekeeper, the man from the country is the antagonist because he's the one wanting to get in. That bastard. <laughs> right? That, okay, so that's an interesting point of view. Uh, hold on. Right by. Alright. So. Fare thee well, my friend. If it's the. Okay, so. Usually it's who the story is about. Who the story is about is who changes within the story. Generally speaking, not always. Um, because usually a story is about a character going through some kind of change. A character arc. I, mean, I, I can see that point of view, especially if you interpret the story in a certain way. I can totally get it. Um, Generally speaking, we think it's about the man from the country because he is the one that changes. Whereas the, uh, the, 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 the gatekeeper really doesn't change very much. You know, he's pretty much the same character he is at the beginning. Um, so, okay. So that's his protagonist. Uh, these are like secondary characters, right? Yeah. Kind of flat secondary. They, don't, they provide a point to the plot, but they don't do a whole lot. Um, the plot of this is very, very, very flat. Not a lot happens. Okay, so what happens is the man from the country comes in, he asks for admittance to the law, the gatekeeper says he can't not allow him in at this moment, right? Gatekeepers, or the man from the country sits by the gate and dies. Essentially, that's the plot. Kind of flat. <laughs> kind of boring. Um, when you're writing, you should probably decide how you're going to write a story, um, getting to the conflict, or an essay, getting to the Getting to the uh, getting to the thesis, getting to the hook, right? As soon as possible, if not immediately. Um, so with this story, the conflict comes when the man from the country asks for admittance, and he's told that he cannot be granted admittance, right? That's a, two sentences in, a sentence in. No, that's one sentence in. And then it's the story, like all this, like elevated stuff with the plot. The beginning, the middle, and the end. Aristotle tells us that. Okay, cool. Um, so we get to that. What is the climax of this story? When he's really starting to go insane, he's talking to the fleas. Okay, so he's talking to the fleas. Yeah. So when the man died. Talk about how he's grown older. Right, right around there, right? Like, that's all leading up to the thing. When he's grown older, he's about ready to die. I think it's right when he asks the question. But somewhere in there. Yeah. Right? I think it was when he's going, why am I not let in? Why isn't anybody coming in? And the gatekeeper's about to lay it out for him. You know? Um, and then at the end, we have what's called the denouement, the untying of the knot. 
um, in which the author tells us everything we need to know to make the play of the story. This was your gate. I'm closing it now. Why didn't he walk through? Okay, okay. So, so like, one of the things people, especially at this school, I love this school. I, I love teaching here, by the way. It's my favorite place I've ever taught. I teach at other places. I love teaching here. Um, I'm not sure why, except for I love. I do love the. I do love the statement that people always give me. It's like, you know, I've never been good at English because, you know, I'm like a. I'm a visual learner. <laughs> And I'm like, me too. I'm totally a visual learner. I'm like, I totally. You know what? Yeah. So okay, cool. Uh, so I like to draw pictures all the time. Yeah. I love pictures. You know, and they never get any better. Like five, six, seven years of drawing the same picture, they're all they're even worse most of the time. So anyway, so as a visual, <laughs> so as a visual learner, I'm gonna go ahead and go. What's the gatekeeper look like? Don't draw them again. You want to draw? No, I'm good. Do you want me to? I don't care. I like yours better. But okay. I don't know. You see, you were talking bad about your drawings. That's why. Uh, I know, I know, but I still feel good. I feel, I feel very positive about the fact that I'm forcing you to watch me draw. It's fun. Okay. What is the? What does he look like? Black beard for a goat. Black beard. Uh, Tartar's beard, right? Yeah. That's that pointed kind of devil's beardy thing. Uh, how big is he? I'm guessing he's tall because he had to bend down. Right, at least he's bigger than the man from the country, right? Yeah. Okay, so indulge my. Uh... <laughs> I just. I, I... <laughs> oh, this is. I get it. Oh. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay, so what's his nose look like? <laughs> Big pointed nose, right? I don't know what that looks like. There we go. Burgermeister <laughs> from that. Burgermeister, Meister. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it looks like. What? That's a nipple ring. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that abs? That's the farmer. Yeah, that's his abs, oh. even though it's kind of like. <laughs> he's a plump guy, but he has abs. Washboard. No, no, oh. You should put a line, down the, line, down, the line down the middle. Line down the middle? Yeah. yeah. There you go. There you go. Bam. Right? But he had a fur coat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slang for it. It's really warm outside right now, so he's said we should He's like, let me tell yourself. Man from the country. What are we going to do this whole time outside the gate? Let me take off the <laughs> What do you think um, about my ass? Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else? Oh, uh, please. Yeah, please is for a caller. Yeah. Okay, cool. Good. I do think it's getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say better. Really? The, better. the other one was pretty bad. Yeah. It had a side pipe, remember? A side pipe? Yeah. I don't even know what a side pipe is. Oh, like okay. A Urban Dictionary. There side pipe is like a ratchet? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what about the man from the country? Describe him for me. Uh, I don't even remember. You don't remember? I was too indulgent with this. You don't remember? Right? Does it say? No. It says nothing. Well, he also Just young to old, coat. right? Young to old. He, he what? He has a fur coat because he starts talking to his fleas in his coat, right? No, he's he's it's talking to the, fle the fleas in this guy's oh, coat. Okay. I know, right? Like, it's hard to, like, when somebody's just reading things, it's hard to get everything right. You know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But he goes from young to old, young-ish to, we don't know how old, to older, right? But he's... Design age. 
Because right. the gatekeeper is all hunched all. over. The gatekeeper does not eat age at all, right? Yeah, and then he starts to hunch over, right? <laughs> we could. Um, I just want to be sad, though. So that's cool. Okay, good. So, because I'm a visual learner, sometimes when I'm reading something, I have to write. I have to draw things out. I'm not a good drawer, but at least it helps me like connect up things, like visualize what's happening in a scene. Or sometimes I just imagine it. You know, whatever happens, happens. Okay, so uh, so begin. Okay, the setting. When is this happening? Time and place, right? When is it happening? Outside oh, of the time. gate. Outside, outside of the, of the gate. It's on the law. Yeah. Outside the law. What is the law? Like a doorway type thing. You're thinking of it as a doorway? Like a structure. Okay, so like a formal structure? Yeah. Like a gateway, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, like a gateway. I honestly thought of the gateway into Oz. Like you saw like a golden path like coming through here or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah the gatekeeper's peeking out of a little hole for a second. It's like, hey, what are you, what are you doing here? It's, it, it, I mean, see like other people, yeah. other people in the audience the saw like, yeah. uh, saw like um, clouds over here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? There was just grass and a gate. Right? Isn't that interesting? Other people saw black darkness, blackness, kind of like like on the sides here and this stuff. It depends on our cultural context, right? It come, depends on our... Go to church as a kid? Yeah. yeah. Um, it depends on our cultural context, right? Um, so that's what's going on. And, and we can't avoid it. As a Catholic boy, I see clouds and grass. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that a trip? We can't avoid who we were. Oh, where did the darkness people from? Oh, you guys are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, what did they do? You got a, you got a problem, bro. No, you don't have a problem. You're just like yeah. I didn't see darkness. No, I'm just curious. Uh, usually, they're people that were not grown up. They did not grow up in just in in, exist. in yeah, not necessarily atheistic, but mm. just it wasn't a major concern. You know that kind mm. of stuff. It wasn't a major influence on their lives. Uh, other people, you know, whatever. But, okay, so we have a gateway, so we got the place. That's the, almost all the setting we got. Do we have any other? Uh, from beginning of him to the end of him. Be Whatever that time period is, right? Uh, to begin, we don't even know what it is, but it, it's that time period. We have that, but we don't know, like, what era this is. You know, like, it's not 1850, and, you know. Or it's not 2012, or a turn of the century. Only, only the writer's life, right? Do we contextualize that? But it doesn't really tell us. We also do we have other gates? Mm -hmm. Okay. And other gatekeepers. And other gatekeepers. Okay. Or gates be on the first. Yeah. Okay. Well, from the really you know, fur coat for pointed beard and the famous cock that we can kind of assume that's kind of northern Slavic Russia area. Uh, well, okay. So I I dig that reasoning. Okay. So they're just in the distance, right? All right. Awesome. They must have a really boring job. Oh, yeah, most people do. <laughs> um, so, so um, okay, so like I dig your reasoning and uh, with that whole like idea of like northern and and yeah, yeah, probably probably true except for the story. The story, um, don't confuse the writer with the writing. In other words, I see what you're saying, but I was also using like the pointed beard and the the Tartar's beard. Yeah, the the, the Tartar's beard and the. Uh, I see people walking around with them all the time, especially bouncers. True. You know what I mean? Yes. It's just an intimidating beard. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I could totally see what you're saying with that. The fur coat. Not a lot of people wear. <laughs> I told you I've been sick, right? Yes. <laughs> Six weeks. Can't get rid of it. God. It's just like hanging on. Um, so I know. Can you help me? Um, so uh, 
So yeah, yeah, and you can interpret it that that way. I don't interpret it that way because I look at the, I look at this. The tense of the thing. Oh, we do have a chair too. We have a stool. Are the other gates like in the distance behind that gate? Yeah, he says past this gate there are more gates. And he peeks through, right? He, to get through he peeks. Th yeah, he does see it. Only see to the are the gates inside the gate he's trying to get into, or is it like? So outside? basically, he gets inside that gate. Well, that's a great effing question. Gate. Different yeah. levels to that's the gate. Because he said, I, like, <laughs> the more, they're more powerful they're, as they're they go. They're more powerful so, as like, they go, the gatekeepers, right? As he go in, is there, like, another, another like, like task to for the next gatekeeper? Probably and it just keeps we'll on going. Know. No, he just gets screwed because that's his gate. <laughs> Say that again? We'll never know. We'll never, we'll never know. know. Why won't we know? Because he's he dead. dead. Because he he's dead. And, the gatekeeper shows. and he, when he looks through here, he never sees the other gates. He never sees the other gatekeepers. He hears about it. He hears about it from this guy. The guy keeping him out. Those don't exist. As far as we know. Yeah. Right? And they might, but as far as we know, they don't exist. Okay, good. Screw those guys. <laughs> they don't exist. Because the guy keeping him out is the one that told him they're there. What do you say if you get past me? There, it's all hope free, dude. <coughs> what do you say? Hey, man, yeah, you get past me, and you you got it. No, 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 no. He's gonna say, why even try getting past me? You're not gonna get past the next guy. Okay. And the reason why it's interpreted a little bit differently than your interpretation, by the way, totally legit. That's the beauty of literature. Is it's up to as long as you're a good reader. And a thinker, it's up to your interpretation. Because how we interpret works of literature, and works of art, but particularly literature, is through our experiences. Yeah? And so when we, and that's why I want you guys to read things before we talk about them, because then I can get like your trip. And your trip is as important as mine. Um, I may throw in a few extra things. I may throw in a few things and go, hey, what do you think about this? But I'm probably not going to say you're wrong. Unless you just rock. You know, there is such a thing as wrong. And there is such a thing as stupid. And there are stupid questions. What tense is this thing called in? <laughs> Present tense, there's no future. It goes on, right? It goes on forward, but it's all present tense. To the um, before the law sits a gatekeeper, to this gatekeeper comes a man from the country who asks for admittance into the law. See how each one of those is present tense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so check, check it out. What that does is this, is when you write in present tense, that means the action is happening at that moment, whenever moment is read in or whatever. So when Kafka wrote this in 1917, let's guess, and he read this to his friends, his friends were like, wow, that's amazing, right? And it was present tense. It was happening right then. And when I just read it to you, it was happening just then. And in two generations from that, when my grandchildren show up, you know, and they read this story, it's going to be happening to them at that moment. So for me, how I read this is that changes the setting. And the setting becomes... Um, This time, this place. Present tense, now and here. Here and now. Okay? And that means that this is somebody different. Every time? That's why they didn't give them characteristics, right? Right. That's why he has no description whatsoever. Uh, this is you. It's a parable. It's you, right? It's you. It's uh, the man for the country is you, the citizen, the person, the human being. Uh, this time, this place. And that can even mean this. This person has changed. And this person is me. Yes, girls, what can we do for you? 
No. He's playing with the sunlight in front of the light. <laughs> He's playing with the sunlight? Yeah. What a jerk. <laughs> Why would you do that? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm a boy. Um, <laughs> boys do things for no reason. That's always been my excuse for everything I've done. Um, so if this happens this time, this place, that guy becomes me. Why didn't he go into the gate? It was the gatekeeper said he had no admittance. Huh? The gatekeeper said he had no admittance. Did not go in this time. It was like the gatekeeper was waiting did for him to do something. Did some powerful dude crush this writer's dreams at some point? <laughs> I think the world crushed his dreams at some point. So I guess I'm, my interpretation of this is that the gate represents just like this blockage of them trying to get to some goal or do something and there's like authority figures or world or whatever telling him he can't do it and he's caring more about that guy than actually just walking through that gate and doing it anyways. Right. Just like you. Yeah. Yeah. Just like you, every single one of you. You've given people authority your whole lives. You had them keep you out of the gates that were assigned to you for no other reason than fear. Okay, so what is confusion? What, what do you mean? Like, say that again. Like, confusion, right? But I mean, what does that mean? What is confusion? Not knowing. Okay. What stops you from knowing things? Why do you, why do you not go forward because you don't know? Why? You're afraid to go into the darkness. You fear new, the new. You fear leaving home, that kind of thing. Uh, and you allow other people to control you. You did it this very day. You did it when you walked into this classroom. See, I know, I know this about you, and I know this about me too, but I know this about you in particular, is that, and, and our species, you know, uh, however you look at our species, is we are controlled by two things, and only two things, and you can argue with me, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> I, but I'm still, I still, I leave out the possibility that I am, I am wrong. Um, you're controlled by fear and pleasure. Fear of pain, Sorry, I didn't mean to do that to you. <laughs> I did that. Anyway. And I didn't mean it. But I was like, God, I flipped her off right now, and I'm so sorry. Fear of pain and attraction to pleasure. Now, you, you know, you go, I do things for more noble reasons than that. And yes, you do. I give charity because it brings me pleasure. It makes me feel good to give charity. I take care of my children because it's my responsibility. And that gives me pleasure to know that I am taking care of my children. It's meaningful to me, right? Um, and and I fear. I why you know why I protect them from certain things is because I fear what could happen to them. You see what I mean? And I'll do some really irrational, horrible things due to fear. I will do some horrible things because I fear, right? I might even, I might even. Uh, I might even uh, send out like send a send a bunch of young men to go kill a bunch of people in another country because somebody has struck fear in my heart. I might do that, right? By the way, the people controlling you know that too. <laughs> the people know that if they can strike fear in your heart, you will be willing to allow them to do all sorts of things. They will manipulate you. Propaganda is fear. Manipulating the masses, right? Turn on Fox News. I'll give you five minutes to turn on Fox News with it, and you look at it with an open mind, and you go, "What are what's happening here? They're trying to strike fear into your mind and your heart." And I'm not taking on not Fox News, although they are the worst. Recent studies show that 75% of everything that is said on Fox News is incorrect. Now, CNN's not much better. MSNBC, it's about 53% is incorrect. Okay, so it's not much better. It's just, why are they doing that? Why are they doing that? Because they know that you're manipulated by primal emotions. As sophisticated as we think we are, 
we're still manipulated by the same things. And that's you, and that's me. You gave me authority immediately within this classroom before you even knew I deserved it. Not one of you checked my credentials. Two of you know who I am, three of you. Three of you know who I am, the rest of you have no idea of who I am. But you just blindly gave me your, the authority that I have. Because I took it. By the way, the man from the country never says, the, uh, the, uh, the gatekeeper never says the man from the country can't enter. He says, what does he say? Cannot enter at this time. Yeah, it's something like, right, you cannot, and, okay, the man thinks, oh yeah, the, so he but the gatekeeper says he, that he cannot grant him entry at the moment. Like the gatekeeper can't let him in, but he can let himself in. Bam, right? Yeah. The gatekeeper can't allow him in, but the man from the country could have maybe freely walked through. Mm -hmm. it, he just dies. Well, didn't, he, didn't, he was the, like, didn't he say, don't you dare walk in? Because there's that's when he did the whole there's other gatekeepers thing. Um, the man scare him out of it. Trying to scare him out of it. He tries to scare him out of it, but he never says that he can't. That he's yeah. going to stop him from going in. And then at the end, the gatekeeper shuts the gate. Does he said only he had an entrance? It was his gate. It was wide open, as always. So he, that's the thing. That's what your lives are based upon. And sometimes it's legit. Sometimes you should listen to your authority figures. <laughs> <laughs> Other times, you shouldn't. We do terrible things because people tell us to. We allow terrible things to happen in the world because we believe what we are told. Uh, because somebody's in a position of authority. We're going to be looking at this idea a lot more deeply throughout the Clark the Porter. But I just wanted to start you with thinking about this one and a half page short story told you more than any movie you've ever seen. And I'm done. Thank you.